this is our app and this app looks beautiful and this app this bottom navigation bar we'd be doing using riverpod now one thing before we go ahead and uh, do it using riverpod so first you have to know that we have this four screens over here like each of the screens these are the screens that relate to the list we see over here so there's a home screen home screen relates to this one we know that and now as we click on this currently our on tap event this one on tap on item tapped this method gets called this one actually changed the index so when you click on someone so that index flatter get it get from bottom navigation but automatically and pass to it and then we assign to the selected index and then it becomes our current index why because we assign selected index to current index our job is to actually replace this whole section using riverpod because currently it's using set state and over here we also need to change this current index using riverpod state management system all right so how to go ahead and work with this now first inside this project over here I have a folder right now this folder is empty it's called app states and inside this I'm gonna create another folder and over here I would say nav state nav states this is another folder now inside this will hold the states and the state related information in this folder inside the classes now first inside the class we're gonna create inside the folder we're gonna create a new class new dart file we will send nav states now inside this actually we are going to go ahead and create a new class in this class we'll call it nav states and then it will extend uh, equitable now we know that we need equitable for comparing two objects whether they are right or wrong I mean whether they're same or different if they're same we don't need to rebuild if they're not same we have to rebuild the UI all right now over here actually we said that we want to deal with this index right or this one I mean eventually this takes an index now this index comes from this one over here right I mean this method gets called and then the index that flutter gets us flutter gives us we assign to this variable so we need to work with an index right so over here we are going to go ahead and create a variable and we'll call it final int index since we are going to work with index now of course we'll have error because either you could do let modifier or over here we could initialize it like this here we'll have const and then we'll call it nav states and inside this if we call this constructor this should get initialized and would use the default value as zero and then the error should be gone all right now let's reformat our code so that it will look good all right now over here we are going to go ahead and return a list of objects and in our case the first object is index which is also a variable so object could be a variable or a variable could be an object so if we call this constructor this value would get initialized to zero okay we know it now over here we're going to create a new method the method would return an object the object type is nav state and we know that uh, we need this if we work with riverpod well it's not necessary but it's a good way to do it it's not compulsory all right and this what the method would do I'm going to tell you soon so here where here the int index so we're gonna pass this and then once we pass it over here we can return inside like wrapping inside this class as a constructor and return an object just like this one so with this one we get this get initialized once and the default value is zero in this method we are going to return an object with new value so that's why over here we'll have nav state and inside this we'll have like this we do index so if we have a value we'll check if we have a value or not index if index has value use that value otherwise use whatever 
is the current value. And then we just simply return. All right. So from our UI, somehow we will try to call this method. As this, as we call this method, we pass the index. And what index? The page index. Okay. We try to pass that. And we check it if the given index, which is this one, if this is null or not. If this is not null, whatever it is, we use that. Otherwise, we use the previous value. And with this, we return an object. Now, of course, you can just simply return int, but this is better, like returning like this using an object. And uh, it's more reusable as well as maintainable. Over here, inside this class, we'll create, a, inside this folder, we'll create a new class. Let's go ahead and do it. We'll call it nav notifier dot dart. Now we need this. Why we need this? Because we need to notify that index value, the one over here that has been changed and we do it from here. So this one, this class is more like a controller. If you're coming from getx, so you'd understand it better. Now over here, we'll create the class and we'll call it nav notifier and it will extend state notifier. All right. Now state notifier should take a state type. What is state type? In our case, state is nav states. All right, this one. Now over here, we need to go ahead and call super constructor. Otherwise we'll get error. So what it would do, we'd do nav notifier, first call the current constructor of this class. And then here we do super, and then we could do const and then we'd say nav notifier and with this our error should be gone all right let's see okay it should be nav state actually not nav notifier because you have to call the constructor of the state class the constructor of the state class is nav state which is this one and this time the default value would be zero and we should get initialized now after that Actually, we have to create a mechanism to call this method. As I said earlier, we'll call this from UI. Actually, not directly from UI. You should not do that. You should call it from your controller or from your state notifier. But before we move ahead, what is state notifier? Well, we know that state notifier is part of Flutter package or Flutter framework, actually. And it notifies the states. That's as simple as that one. That tells the UI or the that listen to it it tells them hey the state has been changed and you should go ahead and update the ui here we'll create a method method would be void type and we'll call it on index changed we'll call this method to change our index and over here we'll take a parameter and we'll call it index now inside this we'll have state and state equal state dot copy with and then whatever the value that we got in this function, this function, and we have to assign it to the index variable, the one it takes in the copy with method. So actually, this is the method that we will call from UI. And as we call, we will see that we can call copy with. Now we already know that if you extend statement notifier, the state variable become available. And since the state variable become available, the state notifier state type, which is class, this class, this class fields and properties, we can call them using dot operator. And that's what we have done over here. Once again, if you extend state notifier, your state object would be available. And from your state classes, you can call all the methods and properties. So copy with is a method inside this state so we can call that and that's what we did as we called we pass the object which is our index once we pass it over here we return a new object and after returning the new object we save in the state variable so that the new state is saved so that we can later on access it what do you want to access actually you want to access state.index so we'll see we'll access this one because over here, this returns an object, and the object hold 
this field object has this property if you know how object works in object oriented programming it, the idea should be very clear so we change the value and assign to it all right and after that over here actually we we need to really access this one from ui you can't really access directly you need to create a mechanism and this is where first time we are going to use a provider actually riverpod provider here we'll create a variable and we'll call it nav provider all right and over here we would do state notifier provider this one and it takes your notifier type which is nav notifier and that notifier state which is nav states this one and inside this actually we'll have ref object available since we are using provider over here i mean river pod and simply over here we could just return nav notifier and we are good to go so on our ui we'd be able to access this one if we can we'd be able to access this and we'll see we'd also be able to access other properties like state if we need that okay all right so you have to have this mechanism so with this it's more like you are saying okay i have everything ready my states and notifier and i should use this one to work with the state and notifier from our ui so if we use this one from our ui we'll see that we can access everything now let's go to our ui over here all right so the first thing over here it's like this we don't really need it like this so now we don't need this one anymore so over here there is a there is a variable which is called value actually you can call it anything it doesn't matter and inside for this we also have a function attached to it and that function actually is a callback function once you tap that function gets reacted now inside this we're going to use our river pod now before we use a river pod actually we need to convert the stateful class to consumer consumer stateful widget if you want to use river pod otherwise it's not going to work and over here instead of using state we say consumer state now let's take this one and put it here as well i think we have a typo yes all right so we have this one now since we have this one in this method over here or in this function we can access the ref object and from it there is a method which is called read and inside the read we can access our provider the provider that we created and that name is nav provider provider we get this error the reason is actually over here this provider should not be inside this class actually it should be out of this class sorry about that one and at the same time i have noticed that i have a type over here so let's go ahead and fix them it's a notifier so let's fix everywhere yes we are good to go and now we're here let's go ahead and import it we'll be able to import it all right we did that now so once we have this provider or once we can access our provider we can also access an object which is called notifier and after that we can actually call method what is the method the method was on index change this one on index change and inside this we can just simply go ahead and pass the value all right now make sure that in your main.dart your material app is wrapped around provider scope okay now we're gonna go ahead and restart our app and we'll see how it goes all right now uh, after that we're here we also need to change this right we don't want to have this as we said early so how to change this one now inside this build method 
actually we can in the, we can create a variable and we will call it nav index and then we do ref dot watch and then we can just simply access our provider so now our provider is available in this variable and if it is available as we said early we can also get the properties from this provider so here we do nav index that dot index but this one is actually directly being accessed from here not from here so you have to understand that so we are accessing this one somehow okay and over here we should also do the same since it is changing so our child should change as well all right now let's go ahead and restart it one more time all right let's see whether it works or not so you click on this and as you see that it works the same as early yeah so that's how actually you convert your class stateful class to a river pod stateful class now it may look like it's a lot of work why you didn't do it just like this because as I said early if your app grows it becomes bigger you don't want to depend on set state which could be messy and sloppy and not maintainable this way you separate your logics logics from your UI business logic from your UI and this way everything is maintainable and readable